On this episode, let's create an add-in that changes the color of the selection and adds a little bit of customizable information to the selection as well. This and many other add-ins are available free from the website linked in the description. Let's walk through some of the features of the add-in itself. You can see there when I create a selection, it changes the color of the selection and adds some text to the bottom corner there. Currently it's showing the range selected and then count of cells that are in the selection itself. If the selection is narrow, it'll change the direction of the text as well. There's a ribbon button with a bunch of options for the add-in as well. The first option is to enable and disable it. So if you don't want it on all the time, you can quickly turn it on and off. I'll get into reasons later why that's super important. The next option is to pick what color you want the selection to be. I like random color because it just gives you a different one each time. In this case, I chose uh, blue so that every time I select, I get that same blue color. Next option is the transparency level. So you can make it a little bit lighter, a little bit darker. It's quick to set from the menu. I like having those quick turn on, turn off things just available in the ribbon. There's a few more of them available there. So address and selected cell count are checked now. So if I uncheck those, the next time I create a selection, you can see that they're not there. You can turn on something like row and column size. You can see 14 rows by three columns or one column by 16 rows and etc. cetera. Uh, if you turn on conditional formatting count, this is kind of a niche feature. But you can see here that if I have a selection that spans over conditional formatting, it'll show it at the count. And for the custom formula option, you can actually write your own formula. As long as you pass in a bracket selection, and we'll repl I'll replace that with the actual cell address. And so in this case, if we just do a sum of bracket selection, it'll constantly pass in the sum of whatever I have selected in. And you get the result there, and you can see that in the, uh, in the column. And let's dive into some of the code behind now. And so you can see here, there's a bunch of private with events. That allows the add-in to see the events in the active workbook. And so from there, you can sort of listen to cell selection changes and figure things out. The other thing I have here is a bunch of get settings, which are really nice for storing user information and loading it. So as an add-in, you can just write to the registry really fast there and you can have a default option. And then as the user updates it, you can do a corresponding function to write back. And here you can see a lot of the listening functions that are set up. As the user changes selections, we react to that. Basically what's happening is we're creating a shape inside of the selection and then formatting it up. So you'll see a lot of resetting shapes or reinitializing objects. Uh, or creating and adding a new one and formatting it there. The way it's done is we just create a class file with that shape and then on the class terminate, we just delete the shape. And so you can create a bunch of these classes to represent the shapes, and then just delete them all and then it disappears. So let's step through what the code does on a selection. So I'm gonna set a breakpoint here. You can see that we're already past reset shape collection. That basically just deletes all the shapes so we can start fresh. We're about to loop through target.areas. And that's basically if you have a discontiguous selection or a bunch of different selections, like you hold control and drag on the grid, this will give you each one of those things so we can draw a shape inside of it. The first part we do here is try to figure out, hey, do what sort of text information do we want to display inside of the selection? And so in this case, custom formula is true. And so we call evaluate custom formula with the address of the selection. Here we call application.evaluate, and then that'll execute that formula. We do replace on the formula with the selection, so we actually put the selection in there, and then that executes, and we put the value into the, to the string. And next up, we create one of those class files to track the shape. We do a little bit of uh, protection against creating a gigantic shape here. We would intersect with active window visible range if we needed to, but we don't in this case. And then we start formatting up the shape. So we create a new one here and then we go with the solid fill and then we'll start looking at, uh, since it's randomized, we're gonna get a random RGB color. And then because there's text in the front, we do need to pick the right matching text color. So there's some basic logic here. It's not perfect but it'll pick like a lighter one if it's darker, a darker one if it's lighter. And then we'll start loading up some saved options here from the user. So like the transparency bit we have is a transparency flag into it. And then the next bit here is trying to figure out the direction of the text. And it has, again, some basic logic on number of columns versus number of rows selected, see which way it should try to orient. Nothing perfect, but you know, kind of gets the job done for the most part. 
And so after we figured that out, we're basically done and it exits out. So I was saying earlier on why it's important to disable the add-in, and that's because it's going to clear the undo stack just like all add-ins do when they touch the workbook. And that's a major bummer. Uh, I use this add-in to help emphasize selection if I need to at different times, uh, but I also use it for a lot of uh, sample code that's in there and also sample ribbon X. And so if you rename the file to a .zip file and go inside, you can see the custom UI here. You can see how to create this menu and the menu icons and the uh, drop downs and the flyouts uh, and how it hooks up to the code. And so it's a pretty good example add-in. So I'd recommend using it more in uh, that vein. And with that, we're at the end of the video. I did want to give a shout out to the Stevens. He's been following the website and then subsequently this YouTube channel. And he's just been a really, really awesome guy. Thank you. And thanks to everyone. I'll see you in the next one.